right, I'd like to call the uh, special meeting to order. Stand with the flag. Megan, would you lead us? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Chairman Kelly. Present. Legislator Quackenbush. Legislator Diamond. Here. Legislator White. Here. Legislator Beniak. Here. Legislator Duchesse. Here. Legislator Wheeler. Here. Legislator Isabel. Here. Legislator Patel. Here. All right. <clears throat> the purpose of this meeting is to discuss uh, and vote on the resolution proposing the lease with Verizon Wireless. Um, so before I open it up to my colleagues, I have a couple of questions. I'll sponsor. I'll, I'll sponsor. I'll second it. All right. Uh, so, um, Sheriff, Mike, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, you didn't see that in the rules and procedure? We charge $15 for each cell phone that rings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll look the other way this time. Um, so, uh, how much of the property is the building going to take up? Is the building permanent? How are they going to have access to the property and is it going to disrupt uh, or cause any safety issues with our property? Well, the building won't be permanent. It's a precast and it is a cement precast building uh, or a precast building and it's uh, about 30 feet long. Okay. They're putting it in a section of one right next to the building uh, in our secure yard by the tower. Uh, when they want to get in there, they're going to have to go to uh, uh, Central Control. We'll have to contact the dispatch who will tell Central Control to open the gate and let them in that area. And that's, that's about it. Okay. And you don't think it's going to create a safety Oh, no. Safety so issue? this room there, they <coughs> contacted the State Commissioner of Corrections on it already, and they said the problem with it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, those are usually pre built facilities. They make them somewhere else in the neighborhood. If you're driving down a main street and you understand, look up top of the key bank, the old key bank building, there's two of them up there. So, I mean, it's just, they're not a, not a thing that they have to go, just go in occasionally, you know, those crazy guys on TV that always keep the signal running right, that's basically what it is. So it's, they're pre, pretty much pre, pre built up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? It's, it's 30 by 30. I know it's 30 feet long, but I don't think it's 30 feet wide. I think it's okay. like about 12 to 15 or 16 feet wide. Okay. The self-contained, all their the generator, all the stuff they need right in that, that building. I originally offered them to use our, you know, our generator to back up and try to get the deal, but they said that they knew it wrong. Are they putting in any infrastructure under the road or anything like that, or is it only installing the building? They're only installing the building. Okay, so the nothing. The only other thing they're going to do, probably, is uh, you know the towers are the way they're built. They're structural loads that they can take, and uh, I gave them our last analysis of that tower. But I also uh, advised them that we are still working on radio projects, and we will be putting other antennas on that uh, building. Emergency management has a project going on right now for uh, simulcasting, and that's going to affect that tower. We're going to put antennas on it, so they've been made aware of that. Uh, they already told us. They had their engineer there looking at it. They're probably going to have to beef up the tower uh, to make it carry the weight. But nothing will be done until our radio company approves what they're doing. So, okay. as far as touching the tower. And, and the next again, they usually, not an attorney, they usually put a truck, a cable truck between the building and the base of the tower or something. Right. They don't ger generally bury those cables, and uh, it's like a feed truck. Ice bridge. They yeah. call it an ice bridge. Where they can feel the bridge, you know, feel it in that, in that truck all the time. So. Good. And this, this area they're proposing the building 
um, and the space on the tower is not something that you need the sheriff's department. It's not space being currently the used. space on the ground I'm not currently using. It's just for one area. Okay. Uh, really, not much you can do in there. Yeah. Like I said about the tower, though, you know, they won't be able to put anything up there until our radio company approves it. <clears throat> if our radio company says that you you can't do that, you're going to have to make the tower bigger or put more support on the tower. They're going to have to do that before they can put their antenna on. And it's just telephone waves. It's not any kind of microwave or radio wave, right? No, it's just, fine. It's just telephone. Okay. We have a microwave on there, and we have. <coughs> Before you go, Joe, does anybody else have any questions they'd like to share? It's no? okay. Well, when they speak, that's fine. You're up, Joe. It's it's generally a, a high megahertz frequency, but it's below. Okay. And it's a, they usually put it, they put very directional antennas on because if you notice your cell service changes as you're going along uh -huh. and, they, and they would not interfere with anything on the site. We have a tower that we share with six or seven uh, cell phone people. Okay. The only other thing I'd like to sit down with you if this passes tonight and, and the company. Okay. So we get a contract squared away the way we want the words. Sounds good. <laughs> She's stuck, Mike. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? If not, um, all those in favor? Can we, uh, roll, can we roll call? We have to. Roll call. Okay. Uh, Legislator Wheeler. Yes. Legislator Isabel. Aye. Legislator yes. Pertel. Yes. Chairman Kelly. Yes. Legislator Diamond. Yes. Legislator Whites. Aye. Legislator Beniak. Yes. Legislator Duchesse. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Motion to adjourn. You got it. <laughs> I'll second it. All right. Resolutions for Health and Human Services, I'll take just a minute to, to call them up. Both of them uh, are, are justified with respect to their statement of uh, legislative and financial impact and other justifications. So just give me a second and I'll get there. Convening at six ten here. All right. Privilege of committee members. Does anyone wish to be heard on anything regarding? Nope. 
Thank you. Okay, the first is a resolution accepting some grant money, uh, the Public Health Emergency Preparedness Supplemental Ebola Grant. I'll sponsor. Look for a second. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to, move to uh, full board. Full board. Uh, the second. This one is a resolution. We didn't know if this was going to come in time, but it's here. This is a resolution amending the operating budget, eliminating a senior account clerk typist position, establishing a, an account clerk typist position. So that has a minimal impact. It's actually a, a decrease in expenditures, but the, but the transfers involved uh, match up in, in the statement of legislation, uh, legislative and financial impact all make sense. So I look for a sponsor and a second. Thank you. Move to full board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Anything else? We're adjourned. That's a good meeting. <laughs> You're up. safety meeting together uh, welcome everybody uh, is there anything any discussions no. come on somebody's got to have a discussion mm -hmm. we're good rusty will think we don't do anything <laughs> okay now uh, let's uh, move on to resolutions and we got a resolution four <clears throat> Let's do this. We're on res resolution. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit. I was just sorting through papers and I got caught. So, all right. Uh, Montgomery County Public Defender. Does everybody have that in hand? Is there any discussions on that? I need a sponsor first. Awesome. You can sponsor. sponsor. Go ahead. Okay. And There's a sponsor and a second. All right. Well, no, that's okay. Oh, there. You can second. You can second that. Is there any discussion on this? This is a. Uh, yeah, there is. There is? Yeah, you and Barb, sorry. No, that's okay, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Montgomery County Public Defender has advised uh, they have $11,384 grant for three years. And the funds can be used for the public defender's office. Do we have any questions? Nope. So shall we move this to full board? Move it to yes. full board. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we have the uh, sheriff's office. I thought that's all you had, sheriff, was the one resolution. Oh, I guess there's more. <laughs> sheriff has been notified that it's $161,128 to assist in replacement of the E91 phone systems, you want to explain it? Uh, first, I need a sponsor. Here's a sponsor and a second option. Well, we can let the other guy second if you want to. That's good. Okay. Sure. Carry on second. Sure. Back. Yes. Okay. Do uh, you want to explain that a little bit, Sheriff? Sure. Please. Early, early this year, uh, the county executive notified that there was a grant money out there uh, for the 911 systems, and uh, I applied for it, and uh, there's no match money.
Uh, this grant will cover almost the whole cost of it. Uh, we'll take some of the uh, money out of our 911 revenue uh, that we have, our surplus money that we have uh, put aside. We can match it, and we have not match it, but make the money up that we need. So it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to, to 40 thousand dollars, and we'd be all set. So what I'm asking tonight is for us to accept this money, the award, uh, and put it in the, my revenues. So when the bid comes in, and we're set to uh, uh, accept the bidders, we'll, we'll be ready to go. And how, how far along are you with the project right now, sure? Well, like I said, the bid came back, two companies bid. At that time, the, the, the money, the average was a little over $200,000. Uh, we weren't happy because they did not bid the way we put the bids out, uh, the equipment. So they are redoing it. And we figure like the first week of May, uh, it should be all set to review again, open that bid, review it, and then I'll be bringing it to you uh, either, either the end of May or the first part of June. And then uh, you'll vote on whether you want to accept that bid. And at that time, I'll also do another resolution to get the, the needed money to match what I need to pay for the, the project out of our 911 reserves. So we'll all be done one night. And Very then, uh, once that's done, and we agree, and Fulton County agrees on it, then uh, uh, it'll be about four months before the equipment is ready to be installed. So we're talking close to the end of the year. And uh, we have a current, we currently have a five-year maintenance contract on the system we have, and that's going to end about the middle of this year. We're going to try to get it to be extended to the end of the year for the new systems put in. Okay. Any other questions? No. And the uh, sheriff's going to be giving an award to what three deputies? Correction officers. Correction officers. What life was saved. it? They saved a life in the. Uh, well, they may. And in, uh, and if any of the other people on the board want to attend or our committee, okay, uh, if you'd like to attend. Yeah, we appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you'll send us the date. The time. Yeah, it just got changed. I guess somebody was absent, sheriff, and they moved the date. I guess. So. Okay. All right. Okay, we have a resolution again for the district attorney. He has received monies for forfeiture. It's just a simple transfer. Do we have a we have a sponsor, Barbara? Second, Bob. Sure. Okay. And uh, any questions on that resolution? No. Nope. Okay. And uh, should we have a motion to move it to full board? A motion to move it to full board. Okay. <coughs> And let's see, we have a resolution for the district attorney. Has been awarded a grant utilized for a white collar crime prosecution prosecutor. And uh, could you explain that a little bit because you're familiar with it? Or? Um, at this point, it's just authorizing acceptance of the grant, uh, and they're not doing anything with it. So they're going to have to come back to us to authorize expenditures at a later date of that? Yes. That is, that is my reading of the request. Okay, uh, I'll sponsor that one if Barb wants to second that one, it's okay. And is there any uh, discussion on this? Move it to full board. I'm gonna have some discussion a little bit anyway. <laughs> All right, okay, we'll move it to full board. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And I think that's it. Is there any other discussions uh, for tonight for uh, public safety? Then do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. There we go. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. Good job, Joe. I don't know. I'm not a hard one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. We have to call the to order the Economic Development and Planning Committee. Do we have any open discussion from the legislature? If not, we have Mark Kilmer, President of CEO of Fulton Montgomery Regional Chamber of Commerce, who would like to do a presentation on scaffold law. First of all, I want to thank everyone for providing me with the uh, time and opportunity to come and talk to you and uh, hopefully gain your support uh, in the form of enacting a resolution to support many other
counties, uh, chambers of commerce, business organizations, and such throughout the state to, uh, to encourage and advocate for reform and or repeal of uh, the uh, labor law 240-241, better known as scaffold law. Now, I don't know, it's not a real well-known law, law. If you talk to people around the state, I don't know how many of you know about uh, the scaffold law and the way this uh, imposes a great amount of cost and it hinders economic development, uh, hinders businesses' ability to grow, and it actually drives business out of the state. Uh, I've given everybody some quick facts there, and I'll very briefly go through some of the points on there. First of all, I just explained what the scaffold law was, uh, but not precisely. This is a law that supposedly protects workers, and particularly um, construction workers, but it's not solely for construction workers. This protects them from what is referred to as elevated gain or elevated caused accidents. Uh, you would think that's by the name of the law, as well as by the definition, that means if you fall off a scaffold or a ladder, that you can sue someone. Well, that's not the case. You can fall into a ditch on a work site. You can have a, a hammer drop on your head off a, off a plank somewhere. You can have somebody fall on you. And it still is covered under the scaffold law. Anything that is elevated, uh, re related, an injury relating to elevation caused uh, injury. You can trip. The elevation causes in the fall. So there is no limitation to this law and how it can be really abused in courts today. And what we need to change in this law, and the Chamber has provided a resolution, in fact, they're giving you three um, examples of different resolutions that were done. Uh, one most recently, uh, the Chamber has one there that we first did about uh, in the late fall, and then uh, the County Board of Supervisors followed suit with their own resolution. And then also in your packet is a resolution that was done by the New York State Association of Counties. So they too have fallen uh, into this category of wanting to uh, reform the law. Um, this is a law that is an old law. It's an onerous law. It dates back to 1885. We're literally the only state in the nation that has this type of law in the books. The others that had it have already repealed it because they have uh, experienced the loss of economic development opportunities and jobs. Uh, it costs taxpayers. It's not just about business, it's about taxpayers. Um, the people that vote for you and that you work for. $785 million a year is the uh, estimated cost of taxpayers in the state of New York in terms of what they have to pay just to do construction projects, infrastructure, whether it be sewer systems, uh, water systems, or new buildings. Uh, this is all new costs, added costs imposed because of the added insurance that needs to be bonded when you do a public or municipal project. I heard school districts. It's estimated that $200 million a year in added costs go to school, or it costs schools the $200 million a year for construction projects. And the city of New York couldn't even, could barely afford to bond their uh, three-year program of, um, of uh, upgrades for their school districts. So again, it hinders advancement in many areas. Um, it's, it's a law that is really, there's no limitation as to what you can sue for. Right now, the standard in the law that we want to see change is it's called the absolute liability standard. And it's written into the law, basically, in that form. It provides a person, a worker, or an individual that falls. Absolute, uh, it provides them to, um, to um, say that the company or the owner of the building or the construction company has absolute liability in covering this accident. And it was a, it's not based on any fault of the worker. A worker can come on a job site inebriated, uh, intoxicated I should say, or under the influence of drugs. They can go on the work site and uh, do things that are dangerous, horseplay. They can go on the work job and not follow any of the state safety rules and regulations that they're supposed to follow. And if an accident occurs, the absolute liability falls into place. So there's no way you can even defend it. So when a company is brought forth with a scaffold law lawsuit, they're losers automatically. The thing we want to see changed in terms of reform is just make it comparative negligence instead of absolute liability, which means that anybody that is um, confronted with this type of lawsuit has an opportunity in court to fight for their uh, just justified uh, reasoning that uh, they weren't totally at fault, that maybe the worker was at fault. And um, the state of New York is not allowing that to happen right now in the current form of this law. It's an insurance crisis that costs uh, money, uh, incredible amounts of money, for businesses to actually uh, operate legally with the proper amount of insurance. Because the cost, 
Well, it's such a lawsuit that there is no defense of this lawsuit. Uh, it's such a law that there's no defense of lawsuits that uh, companies, insurance companies, don't want to write it. So there's no competition in the insurance industry that allows for people to shop around. There's, I think, only one or two companies in the state that actually offer this type of insurance, and it's incredibly high. And what that causes is two things. One, as I said earlier, the cost of projects goes through the roof just to cover the insurance. And number two, um, many, many of the smaller contractors will not buy it. And so that imposes a danger on the people that have their um, properties worked on, and it imposes a danger to the business itself who, again, can suffer incredible uh, damages because of that lack of coverage. So what I'm asking you to do, and again, I provided you with three resolutions, is to please consider advocating along with us in what is, rapidly, what is a rapidly growing number of counties in the state of New York to advocate for some type of change. There are some uh, of the resolutions that ask for full repeal. In the Chamber's resolution, we simply ask for reform, but something that will be a driving force in starting the um, the, the drive to bring uh, about a maybe a full repeal or at the very least some reform to bring some relief to both businesses and uh, municipalities and the general public because everyone is at risk with this. And just as an interesting side note, I was in Albany a couple of uh, weeks ago and I was talking to some people regarding this in the Chamber of Business and my understanding is, I don't know if you're all familiar with the, uh, the rehab that's going on or has been going on at the state capitol. They did a complete um, rehabilitation of the building, including a new slate roof. They could not even afford to hire an in-state contractor to do the roof work because the cost was so high, and they say the cost was so much higher than a Vermont contractor that got that contract that uh, you know they had to hire out of state. And what that did is it did two things. Uh, it cost the state, well, any company in the state could have done the same work, but they couldn't even bid on it because of the incredibly increased amount of cost to them. And evidently, when somebody comes from outside the state, uh, they can come in without the proper insurance because they're evidently immune from the lawsuits that uh, would be imposed if one of their workers or somebody uh, else was hurt by this. And another side note is when we do uh, work in the, in the uh, bridges and the tunnels in New York City, it's incredible the higher cost that it is for New York State side than it is for the New Jersey side. And it said that the Tappan Zee Bridge work is going to be, uh, probably the cost of the Tappan Zee Bridge has increased by 200 to 400 million dollars just because of this uh, particular law and the needs to address the liability insurance that goes along with it. So, again, um, I'm asking for your support in the form of a resolution. Again, as you can see in the last page that I gave everybody, there's a, there's a, a, a huge number of uh, organizations within the state that are uh, advocating for this and that. On that sheet, you won't see the uh, New York State Association of Counties or the Chamber because uh, that sheet was uh, printed before we actually did our resolution. So uh, I'm sure there's uh, going to be including us more than what's on there now as for advocacy groups uh, coming forth. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Go ahead. You said that this, this law drives uh, businesses from the state. Do you have any empirical data that would substantiate that remark? Uh, there was a study done by the by Cornell University, uh, by actually the Rockefeller Center for Economics, and uh, it stated the cost of business. Now, um, what it drives out is, uh, is the ability for people to come here and be willing to do economic development projects because the costs are so much higher. I'm not saying businesses are leaving. You know, the smaller construction companies can't just up and go, and those are the ones that are sacrificing their businesses by not taking out the insurance. But it's the economic development uh, that is uh, not being done due to increased costs, or is being done very slowly due to the increased costs that is uh, costing us business. You mentioned a lot of uh, a lot of organizations that, that are behind this change. Um, what are some of the types of organizations that that, that are, are uh, opposed to the change? Is it or is it, or is it universal that it everybody is, wants to see this change? We haven't come across many organizations. Quite frankly, some of the unions are opposed to it because you know their uh, membership views it as a safety issue for them. Um, actual data has shown, and this is the Cornell study that uh, I want to tell you about, is that they did a study that shows that where uh, the states that have actually repealed it there was a downward trend in injuries because now uh, workers are more conscientious about being safe and they're not coming on the work sites and uh, operating in an unsafe manner. So it just does the opposite. But uh, again, um, in private discussions with union officials, they understand where we come from in advocating against this, but outwardly they have to be for it. 
And uh, it is, again, it's, well, it's, it's viewed as a, uh, a protection for workers. Well, hang on a second. Just, I, I, I want to get back to what you just talked about. Did, did you did you say that, that workers act more safely when this law is not in place? That was a study that Cornell did a few years they're back. Less, they're less willing to, to risk uh, paralysis and from a fall. Yeah, well, they take more care in what they do because they know that it's not it's not going to be a lottery winning for them if they fall. It's mm -hmm. going to be now possible to, you know, uh, they're going to be somewhat uh, liable for their own actions. And if they're not following safety procedures, they're not going to be able to uh, collect as easily. And, and when that's the case, they naturally will be more safety conscious, utilizing more of the safety equipment they have at their hand or at their uh, at their um, on the site. And at the same time, they're less apt to come on the site in a manner that's going to cause them danger. Uh, that's uh, an interesting danger. notion I can't fully accept, but mm -hmm. thank you. Any more questions for Mr. Kilmer? Mark, thank you for coming and giving your presentation. Well, thank you, and I, uh, again, I uh, appreciate your consideration of a resolution. Do you have an extra seat? Yeah, I'll bring it right back to you. Where do you want to be? Okay, we also have one resolution. We have a resolution appointing a member to the Planning Board, District 3, Office of Legislator. And it is a resolution by Legislator Diamond. Can we have a second? I'll second. Ryan, second. Any questions on it? All in favor of moving it to a full board? Aye. All right, only two other things. Just a, an update. Um, the Committee on it for Tourism has chosen the recipients for the local tourism grant, and they will be awarded shortly. And there's a, a position that's been posted for economic development specialist. And that is for the replacement from uh, for Carl Gus moving over to personnel. If there's no further questions, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. Adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs>